friends. Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel friends. Today we are going to discuss a new numerical problem on shear force and the bending movement diagram. So this is a overhanging beam and you can see that there is a concentrated load of magnitude 2 kN acting in counterclockwise direction is acting at the point C and a load of 4 kN is also acting at this point C and 2 kN point load acting at point E and there is a UDL between the point A and B of intensity 1 kN per meter. Now the first step is always to find out the reactions at the point at, D to the, at these two supports A and D. So at the support A suppose the reaction is RA and the support at the support D there is a reaction RD acting in vertically upward direction. Both are acting in vertically upward direction. Now because there is no horizontal load acting over this beam so some of these two reaction RA plus RD will be equal to the net vertical load acting in downward direction over this beam. So which will be equal to the vertical load because of this UDL acting in downward direction will be equal to intensity of this UDL is equal to 1 into the spread over which it is spread it, the span over which it is spread it, it is equal to 2 and because of this 4 kN load there will be a load of vertical load of 4 kN and because of this there will be a load of 2 kN acting vertically downward direction. So it will give us 8 kN. Now friends we know that summation of the movement about the support A is equal to 0. So because of this force RD there will be a moment of magnitude RD into this distance 2 plus 2 plus 2 from the point A is equal to 6 and it will try to rotate the beam element AD in anti-clockwise direction about the point A this force RD so anti-clockwise is taken here as positive now this force is trying to rotate this beam about the point A in clockwise direction so clockwise is taken as negative and the moment because of this force will be equal to magnitude of this force into this distance from which it is acting it is acting at a distance of 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 that is 7 and acting in clockwise and because of this force there will be a movement of clockwise okay so 4 kN magnitude of this force into the distance from at, at which it is acting from the point A so it is acting at 2 plus 2 that is 4 distance and it will rotate in clockwise direction now this movement that is acting a, uh, this concentrated movement is trying to rotate this beam in counterclockwise direction that is anti-clockwise direction having magnitude 2 kN. See how it is rotating. Suppose this is our uh, point A okay and this is our beam and this is our point C. Now suppose this movement is acting like this okay we all know that this is going in counterclockwise direction that is anti-clockwise direction. So it will rotate this beam element like this that is in this direction it is very clear it is rotate like this about the point A this beam element AC will rotate in anti-clockwise direction about the point A it is very clear with by the influence of this movement indivisible movement concentrated movement so it is taken here counterclockwise as positive anti-clockwise now when you solve this what you will get so also there is a UDL also because of the UDL there will be a movement of how much magnitude let us see this the intensity of this UDL is 1 and it is acting over distance of 2 meter so 2 meter into at which the distance at which it, this the load because of this UDL act will be in the exact midway of this UDL that is at a distance of 1 meter from this point A so it will also try to rotate this beam element A B in uh, clockwise direction about the point A into 1 1 because of this distance that is the movement we are taking so when you solve this you will get the value of RD is how much? The RD will come out to be uh, 5 kN and RA can be find out by putting the value of RD here and RA will come out to be 3 kN. Okay, so now friends we will calculate the shear force at the various points A, B, C, D and E here. We have to calculate the shear force on the left side of the point A and on the right side of the point A denoted by these two terms and also we have to calculate on the left side of the point C and on the right side of the point C and left side of the point D and right side of the point D and so on. Why we are doing so? Because at these points A, C, D and E the point load is acting and at the point, at the point A the point load is acting in the form of reaction RA. So what we have to do, we have to calculate on the left side and on the right side of this point because here force will change suddenly when going from left side to the right side of this point. 
whereas at the point B there is no point load that's why you have to directly calculate the shear force at the point B. Now on the left side of the point A if you want to calculate the shear force then you have to construct a section on the left side of the point A. So constructing a section on the left side of the point A now you can see that looking on the left side of this section okay we know that the shear force is the summation of all the forces either on the left side of the section or on the right side of the section. So we will take here the left side of the of this section. So on the left side of this section you can see that nothing is lying being terminated that's why shear force is equal to zero. Now shear force on the right side of this section uh, of the point A to calculate that we have to construct a section passing through the right side of the section A, right side of the point A. So looking on the left side of this section you can see that this reaction RA is acting at this point A and it is, it is lying on the left side of this section. So because of this force RA there will be a force of magnitude RA and RA is equal to 3 kN and its sign will be positive using this sign convention. How? Because if a force is acting on the RHS of LHS of a section, left hand side of a section and going in vertically upward direction it is treated as positive. Similarly if this is the section XX and there is a force RA acting in the left hand side of this section and going in vertically upward direction is treated as positive. So it will give us a shear force of 3 kN. Now shear force at the point B we will calculate. So for that we have to draw again a section passing through the point B directly. Suppose this is a section passing through the point B directly. So looking on the left side of this section you can see that this force is contributing toward a positive shear force of 3 kN. That is the magnitude of RA is 3 kN. We all know that. And this UDL is causing a shear force of magnitude. The intensity of this UDL is, is how much? 1 and the distance over which it is spread is 2. So 1 into 2 will give us 2 and it will create a negative shear force. Why? According to this sign convention. You can relate this sign convention with this portion of the uh, beam. Okay. So you will find that. So it will give us 1 kN. Okay. 1 kN. Now shear force on the left side of the point C. For that you have to construct a section passing through the left side of the point C. Okay. So the section is constructed here passing through the left side of the point C. Now looking on the left side of this section, this force is contributing toward a shear force of plus 3 and this UDL is contributing toward a shear force of 1 into 2 that is 2 of negative in nature using this sign convention negative is taken. Okay and it will again give us 1 kN. And shear force on the right side of the point C if you want to calculate then construct a section on the right side of the point C. Okay, so constructing a section on the right side of the point C. Now, looking on the, you can look on the left side of the section. Now I am looking on the right side of the section because both, if you look on either on the left side or on the right side, it will give the same result. Now I am looking on the right side of this section. This force of 12 kN, sorry, 2 kN is lying on the right side and this reaction RD is, uh, is lying on the right side of this section xx. So because of this Rd there will be a shear force of magnitude 5 kN and it will cause a negative shear force according to this sign convention. So minus 5 and this will cause a positive shear force of plus 2 kN using this sign convention because these two forces are this force is these two forces are lying on the RHS of the section and on the RHS of any section we take these sign conventions. So it will give us minus 3 kN. Okay, now shear force on the right left side of the point D we will calculate for that we have to again construct a section passing through the on the left side of the point D. Okay, now passing through the left side of the point D and looking on the right side of this section you can see that this force is again causing a shear force of plus 5 using this sign convention. Okay, and this is causing a shear force sorry this is causing a minus minus 5 using this sign convention. And this is causing a shear force of plus 2 using this sign convention. So it will give us again minus 3 kN on the left side of the point D. On the right side of the point D if you want to find out the shear force then construct a section on the right side of the point D. Like this I have constructed. Now looking on the right side of this section you can see that this force of 2 kN is only accounted for 2 kN shear force using this sign convention. Okay. So shear force on the right side of the point E is 2 kN and shear force on the right side of the point E will also come out to be on the left side of the point E will also come out to be plus 2 kN by constructing a section here you can see that 
XX on the right side of the point T. Now on the right side of the section only this force is accounting for the shear force and it is going in vertically downward direction with respect to the section XX and lying in the right hand side of the section XX. That's why it is treated as positive and taking plus 2 here. Now shear force on the right side of the point T is 0 because the beam terminates on the right side of the point T. Now friends, we have to draw the shear, shear force diagram. Now see this. On the left side of the point A, the shear force is zero, so making a cross here at this line because zero line on this line, and on the right side of the point A, the shear force is going to be plus three kilonewton. We all know that plus things lie above this line, so plus three kilonewton will lie somewhere here. Suppose plus three kilonewton, and shear force at the point B is one kilonewton, so suppose one lie here above the point B as one kilonewton. And shear force on the left side of the point C is 1 kN, so it will lie in the same level 1 kN above the point C. And on the right side of the point C, it is going to minus 3 kN. So minus 3 kN suppose lies somewhere here below this line, minus 3 kN. And shear force on the left side of the point D is minus 3 kN. So minus 3 kN will lie below the point D at the same level at of this point, that is minus 3. And shear force on the right side of the point D is plus 2. So plus 2, that is, it will increase to plus 2 somewhere here. Suppose plus 2 is lying somewhere here of the point D. Okay. Now, on the left side of the point E, is it is going again to plus 2. Left side of the point E, lying in the same level plus 2. And it is going to E at 0 at the point E. So joining first point with the second point with a straight vertical line because there is a reaction R reacting at the point B. That's why we have joined these two points with a vertical line. And the second point is joined with the third point with an uh, inclined line because there are UDL acting between the point A and B. And third point is joined with the fourth point uh, with a straight line, okay, like this. Because the shear force at the point C was 1 kN at the left side. And on the right side, when we moved, it, was, it decreased to minus 3 kN. So again joining with a vertical line because there is a point road line between the point, at the point C and these two joints are again joined with a straight horizontal line because there is no load line between the point C and D and joining these two points again with a straight line, vertical line because there is a reaction RD line at the point D and joining these two points again with a straight horizontal line because there is no force line between the point D and E and joining these two points is a straight vertical line because there is a, a point load of 2 km lying at the point E. So you can see that this is the shear force diagram. Now we will draw the bending movement diagram. Now we have to find out the bending movement at the point A, B, C, D and E. We have to find out the bending movement on the left side of the point C and on the right side of the point C, denoted by these two terms. Whereas we can find the bending movement at the point A, B, D and E directly. Uh, why we are doing so? Because at the point C, there is a concentrated movement of magnitude 2 kN is acting. That's why bending movement will change suddenly when going from the left side of the point C to the right side of the point C. So we have to determine the bending movement on the left side of the point C and on the right side of the point C. Now, bending movement at the point A can be found out by constructing a section passing through the point A directly. Okay, suppose this is the this is the section passing through the point A directly. Okay, now looking on the left side of this section, you can see that nothing is lying. So bending movement at the point A is zero. Now we will calculate the bending movement on the uh, at the point B. For that we have to construct again a section passing through the point B. Suppose this is the section XX constructed passing through the point B. Now looking on the left side of this section you can see that this force is contributing toward a bending movement of this reaction RA. Okay? It is contributing toward a bending movement which is sagging in nature using this sign convention. Why? Because this is a section XX and if a load is acting in vertically upward direction uh, and lying on the left hand side of the section then it will create a positive bending movement about that section. Similarly here if this is the section and this load is lying in vertically upward direction and lying on the left hand side of this section xx then it will create a positive bending movement about this section xx. So this reaction RA will create a positive bending movement of magnitude uh, how much? 3 that is the magnitude of this force is 3 and the magnitude of this force is 3 and it is lying at a distance of how much 2 meter from this section xx. This is the section xx, okay? Yeah, this is the section xx from 2, two meter from this section xx. Okay, so 3 into 2 and it is it will create a 
sagging bending moment using this sign convention so treated as positive and bending moment of because of this udl is the magnitude of the load because of this udl is 1 that is the intensity into this distance 2 over which it is spread it is that is it is spread it over 2 meter that's why taken here 2 and it will act at a, in the it will act at mid midpoint of this udl that is at a distance of 1 meter from this section xx so multiplying it with 1 and it will create a negative bending moment about this section xx using this sign convention okay so it will give us the magnitude of the bending moment at the v as plus 4 you can do it by yourself Okay. Now, bending moment at the point C on the left side of the point C, we will find out for that we have to construct a section passing through the point C on the left side of the point C. The, suppose this is the section which is constructed passing through the left side of the point C. Now, looking on the right side, left side of this section, okay, this RA is contributing toward a movement of 3 into the distance, that is distance between the point A and this section X. X is how much? 2 plus? 2 is equal to 4 okay actually this section is lying very close to this point C that's why it is taken as 4 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 okay 3 into 4 now because of this UDL there will be a moment of magnitude that is the magnitude of this UDL 1 into 2 and it will lie at a distance that is in the middle of this UDL so the distance of this uh, action of this UDL from this section XX will be equal to 1 plus this distance 2 that is between the section xx that is 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 so it will give us a bending moment on the left side of the point c as 1 kN now sorry it, is, it will give us 6 kN okay as the uh, as the bending moment